All right, so we're gonna take a look at how to install everything we need in order to work with Verilog on Mac OS specifically. So I'm working on my, my iMac here at home, uh, and I've done my best to um, remove everything from this computer that is necessary to do Verilog simulation. So I'm, I'm as started from scratch as I can possibly be. Um, just some things that I've got open, I've got my uh, terminal here that I'm gonna run some commands on. Um, I've created a folder for demos. It's got a couple of Verilog files. Um, and then I've got my Visual Studio Code editor opened up and open to that demos folder. So you can see that we've got um, some Verilog files here. Um, just a really simple combination of logic. What this is is not so important in this video as uh, how to use it. So let's go ahead and install everything that we need. The first thing we need, um, if you don't have it already, is a tool called Homebrew for Mac OS. And I'm gonna go to the URL brew.sh. Um, and all you need to do is right here where it says install Homebrew, you wanna copy everything that is there and throw it over into the terminal and run that. Now I already have Homebrew installed, so I'm you know, not entirely sure what's gonna happen here, but you hit enter. Um, oop, you don't need the, uh, the thing there, the little dollar sign. So let's try that again. There we go, it's gonna ask for my password. Um, and yeah, it's going to run and do the stuff. I guess it's going to reinstall Homebrew for me. That takes a little, maybe a f about a minute or so to run through. Look at that. That's done already. Now, now, it might take longer for you if you're installing it for the first time, but, um, but yeah, so that was pretty quick. All right, next thing we want to do is we're going to install a tool called Icarus Verilog. Now, what we can do is search for it in the Homebrew website. In fact, you can see it right here. We'll click on it. And the most important thing is that it's got the installation instructions for us. Brew install Icarus Verilog there in the terminal. So we'll hit that. It's gonna do the thing. And that's installed. We're gonna make sure that it's working by just typing I Verilog, which is the terminal command to do it. Um, and yeah, you can say it throws an error, right? It says no source files and gives some usage instructions, but that just tells us that it's installed and working properly. Now, the next thing that I need is an ability to view my waveform files. iVerilog will synthesize the simulations and do everything that you need to do, but if we want to actually see what's going on, we're going to need a tool um, called GTK Wave. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Google search for that GTK Wave. Um, GTK Wave. Yes. Here's the website, and if you scroll down, yeah, here's this option. Simply download, unzip, uh, and it's ready to run on the Mac. So I'm gonna hit download. I'm gonna allow it. It's going to install. All right, there we go. So that's finished downloading, and there's our GTK Wave application there in our downloads folder. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it over to, whoa, 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 relax to my applications folder. That way it shows up here in my launchpad. Presumably, there we go. Sometimes it takes a second for it to catch up there. So GTK Wave is there. Now, we're actually ready to do some stuff. So I'm gonna go minimize that. I'm gonna clear out my command line there. I'm gonna come over to Visual Studio Code. Now you might notice that VS Code, my Verilog stuff is, is not very pretty to look at. It's just pretty basic text. So one of the things I wanna do is install a, an extension to get syntax highlighting for Visual Studio Code. Now I'm using a specific color and syntax theme of my own in Visual Studio Code, so my colors are not gonna look quite the same as yours, but I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna search for Verilog extension, and I really like this one, this Verilog HDL slash system Verilog slash blue spec system Verilog. And all I have to do is install that, one click, and it's usually pretty good. And then I go over here and open up one of my files and hey, look at that. Now I've got some basic syntax highlighting here in my uh, Verilog file. Same thing for my test bench. Now it looks more like code. Again, your colors might be different than mine because I'm using a different color sort of theme running in the background of my Visual Studio code, just because I like the way that looks but this should work for you. So the next thing we need to do is actually do the Verilog simulations. 
Now, the way this is gonna work is we're gonna go, let's do it here in the regular terminal. I could do it here in the PowerShell or the terminal that's attached to Visual Studio Code, but I'm gonna do it up here. It is I Verilog um, dash O, then the test bench file, or excuse me, yeah, so I usually use the name of the test bench file, simple, this one's called simple in underscore in underscore out dot VVP. So that's the simulation file that we're gonna create. Simple underscore in underscore in underscore out dot, or excuse me, underscore TB. We're gonna run the test bench, not the Verilog module. We should hit that. And if you don't get any output, um, then nothing goes wrong. And then you notice um, here, we've actually got a new file dot uh, vvp file dot vvp file that shows everything this is all the just actual nuts and bolts of the simulation so the next thing i'm going to do in the terminal is actually run the simulation so i'll type vvp and then the name of the vvp vvp file that i created simple underscore in underscore in underscore out dot vvp and then there we go, it says dump file, waveform.vcd open for input. So I created a waveform file. Now, another thing that's pretty cool is that if I go to, what do I have here, demos? Yeah, uh, my folder, macOS recognized, because I installed um, the GTK Wave as an application, I can actually just double click on the waveform file. Um, and then this might happen. So it's gonna say, hey, GTK Wave is some weird thing you got off the internet, so it's not gonna work. So what you need to do is hit cancel, um, go to system preferences, go to security and privacy, and then here it says, you know, GTK wave has been blocked because it's not from an identified developer, open anyway, then hit open. And then now after, from then on, it should work just fine. So for example, if I close that and close that and try it again, then GTK wave opens up just fine. So that first time you might need to tell it what's going on. and Let's go ahead and view our output. So I'm gonna select all these things here. I have a different video that talks about how to use GTK Wave in a little bit more detail, but I'm gonna hit append and then there we go. There's my waveform created from my uh, Verilog test bench files. So there we go. That is all you need to do in order to get up and running with Icarus Verilog um, and GTK Wave on Mac OS. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.